I went to work for J.T. Howard Advertising as secretary to the president of the company and doing print media, print media production, and a little bit of anything else that I could learn to do there. I worked very hard because I really didn't know a lot about the advertising business at that time, but I learned and I consumed everything that I could, and I really began to climb that corporate ladder. And then came the day that our business had grown so much that they told me that I could have my own department. I was head of a department of one. That was me. <laughs> I was so excited. It was, such a, it was such a thrill to have started at the bottom and really worked up. And my department began to, grew, to grow and the agency grew and um, they told me I could hire somebody. And that was really great. I was gonna get some help. But you know what, I hired this person, and then I realized after I hired her, oh my gosh, I've got to like teach her what I know. So that meant that I didn't know everything that was going on in my department. But that began to teach me a very valuable lesson. I was scared that if I taught somebody else what I knew, that it, I would lose my job security. But that didn't happen. The more that I taught her, the better she made me look. And then I began to give her credit, and I saw her grow and thrive. And that was such, such an inspiration to me to be able to train somebody to see them build their career. I also learned during that time how important it is to support the people that work around you and to give them the credit for what they're doing. And don't try to micromanage and always support them in front of somebody else, no matter if they're making the worst mistake in the world, to stand up for them, even if you have to reprimand them at a later time. Well, I stayed with that company for 20 years. It was pretty good. You know, I had an apartment. Everything was going great. I had um, three weeks of vacation, had benefits, and I had a regular salary. I didn't realize until later on how important that was. <laughs> so I took that fatal step. I resigned. Well, you know, they say that you don't make a change until the pain of staying where you are is greater than the pain of change. And it was, because I realized that I had reached the pinnacle at that company and I really had nowhere to go. I, uh, my, my husband had left me at that time. I had two kids that had left home, and I thought, well, you know, I can, I can leave this job. I can always get a job doing something. But I had a fierce, fierce determination to do something for myself and to grow a better company and to take advantage of all the things that I had learned while I had worked at Howard Maryland Partners. And I think that's one of the best lessons that we can learn is that you can't just start out doing something. You have to take advantage of all those life experiences and things that you've learned along the way and begin to let them form what you later become. I also knew that you can't walk on water if you don't get out of the boat. <laughs> so I got out of the boat and I started Media Research Planning and Placement, which later became MRPP. I started with a home office, a telephone, and a Rolodex. Now, I know many of you all out here don't know what a Rolodex is. <laughs> Bud Coggins does. But that was my contact list. I also realized that, because I didn't know anything about starting a business, that it would probably be pretty smart of me to start a business where I had some contacts, a good reputation, and some experience, which was the most important thing of all when I started my business. But you know, I'd been isolated from the real world. I had been so involved in doing my business that I didn't know how to grow a business. I didn't know that there was a whole big, beautiful business world out there that I had never even been able to touch because I had been insulated into growing business for my company. That was when I learned the value of getting out in the community. I learned how to network, which is what we all do. I learned, I learned the, the value of joining the chamber. 
I learned the value of joining other women's organizations. I learned the, the value of volunteering. I, I, I networked, I went to meetings until I felt like I could not go to another meeting. I, it, but it was just something that I saw other people around me doing. I volunteered, I did the most menial jobs that you can imagine. But what that did, it led me to getting appointed on some of those boards. It led me to being able to go out and talk to other people and to be able to sort of get my company recognized in the community. And while I was doing this, my company was beginning to grow as well. And I decided that I wanted to, to have a company that had all the things that I wanted when I was working for somebody else. And I know so many of us have felt that way. If I only had my own company, I would do it this way. Well, I wanted to have a company that had the best research available, that I didn't have to go to somebody else and beg for it. I wanted to have it at my fingertips. I wanted to have the ability to interact with my clients and not train somebody else how to go out and do my work. I wanted a family-friendly environment so that my employees, when they needed to be at home with their sick kids or they needed to go to a play, they didn't have to beg for time off, but they knew that it was allowed. But then at the same time, I wanted them to have the pride in their company that when I needed them at 10 o'clock at night to put a presentation together, that they would be with me. And it worked. I think that was the kind of company environment that I built. As all of this was going on, oh my gosh, I had to hire, I had to, I had to hire somebody. I couldn't do, all, I was working like 80 hours a week and I thought, I retired to do this. I was going to the post office, I was opening mail, I was stamping mail, I was sending out invoices and writing checks and actually going to the bank and putting money in the bank. You know, that was pretty exciting, but, but while I was doing all this, I couldn't go out and get the business. And that's what we as entrepreneurs and people that start our companies do. We're so busy going out and getting the business that we don't have time to do the business. And we find ourselves doing the business at night and getting the business during the day. I know we've all been there. So I hired my first employee. And then I had to go through the same thing all over again. I had to teach her what I knew. But I had already learned that in my former job and how valuable that was. And what that did for me when I made that step to actually go out and hire somebody, she was back at the office doing all those things that I really didn't have time to do and it allowed me to go out and get the business so that my company could grow. What lessons have I learned? Well, to recap, an entrepreneur is a person who has the possession of a new enterprise, of a venture or an idea, and is, a, is accountable for those inherent risk and the outcome. I think I truly fit that description. Risk is an inherent characteristic of entrepreneurship. You've got to get out of the boat. It's not comfortable. It's like working, walking on a tightrope every day. But it's so exhilarating when everything comes together. To share your knowledge. But to take time for yourself along the way too because it only makes you a better person. Because let's face it, if you can dream it, you can do it. It's all about just taking that dream out of your head and putting it into a plan. It's about not being afraid to try and not being afraid to fail. Because let's face it, if you didn't try, you couldn't fail. It takes people and partners along the way because both are going to make you a whole. So in closing, let me say, this is kind of my story in a very abbreviated form. I hope you've taken away some things this morning that will be helpful if there are any of you all out there thinking about getting out of the boat. That dreams and plans lead to more satisfaction than anything you can ever remember. 
Not everyone is an entrepreneur. And you know, that's okay. It's okay to fail, because if we don't fail, again, that means we didn't try. We need leaders and we need support. And it just takes people along the way to help us get there. Thank you so much. And if you have questions, I'll be glad to take a few.